Hello there, this is Douglas Rumbaugh, and in this video I want to talk to you a little bit about audio devices in Pop! OS, or just Linux in general. So of course this here is a virtual machine, which means that the audio is quite simple, but in a realistic scenario you're going to have a lot more sound devices. And one thing that I've noticed, and this is perhaps my biggest complaint about desktop Linux, although it's really not that big, is that Pulse Audio for managing multiple audio devices can be a royal pain in the butt. And so that's why I suggested installing an audio switcher extension for GNOME, is so that you can fairly easily control these things, because I guarantee you that if you have more than one input or more than one output device, every time you boot into your system, Pulse Audio will select the wrong one as default. However, not even this is going to be enough to ensure that you have the correct input and output devices linked up to your applications all of the time. Rather than using a global setting, you can instead use a per application setting to select the correct sound devices, and that will allow you to easily switch them on the fly if you need to. So how can you do this? Well, Pulse Audio Volume Control is one application which is available again from the Pop Shop or the package manager. You can install it as either Flatpak or there's also a dev version. It's called uh, PAVU Control if you want to install it that way. Uh, in either case, this application will give you a lot of control over your sound devices and over what applications are getting input from what and what applications are outputting to where. It's a very useful piece of software and so I just want to mention this here and then kind of show you some general use cases for it. So we'll get that out of the way and let's actually launch it just to show you what it looks like inside the VM. As you can see it has a couple of tabs and so on and so forth. I'm actually going to jump out of the virtual machine and use my desktop for this because I have multiple sound devices hooked up on that one. So we can go ahead and close this out, minimize this and put that away. All right, this is what the Pulse Volume Control application looks like. Now you can select input and output devices here. So this guy provides a list of the output devices that are attached to your computer. This guy provides the input devices. And you can also see the um, uh, whether they're actually reading any sound or not. And you can adjust the volume. So you can change the, the recording volume of these devices from zero all the way up to 153% as it turns out, which can be useful if, uh, for example, the microphone that I have is relatively quiet in general. And so as you can see, I have the uh, recording volume jacked up there rather than doing it somewhere else. Uh, you can also have configuration and here is where you can actually turn things on and off. Uh, for example, I have disabled my NVIDIA audio controller on my graphics card, and I've also disabled my webcam, this will prevent them from appearing on the lists. So if I go ahead and just turn these on, let's throw you on um, analog stereo input and then now if we look, I have more places available. So it pays to just go to configuration and turn off the stuff that you don't intend to use. Uh, that's probably worth doing. So let's go ahead and do that. So we will turn that off. Uh, it will just make your life easier. It also avoids clutter in your audio switcher. So here I just have it configured for my USB audio interface and my, my speakers and then my audio interface and my Yeti microphone. Now, where this actually gets useful is when you have a misbehaving program that doesn't want to bind to the correct audio device. If we look at the first two tabs here, playback and recording, here you can see the different uh, processes on your computer that are outputting audio. And as you can see, even though officially my default audio device should be my audio interface, I have several of these things that are putting audio to the wrong spot. So boxes is and Skype here. I just hopped onto an empty Teams meeting as an example. Skype has defaulted to putting it to the wrong thing as well. So if you're in this situation and you want to switch what your what device your playback is going to, just find the program you want, say Skype, click here, and you can toggle this. 
very easily to put the audio to a different place. It works pretty well, not super complicated. And I can switch this to my speakers. Same deal for recording. As you can see here, I have my simple screen recorder is pulling my audio from my audio box, uh, audio interface, and so is Teams. But if I wanted to, I can switch this to using my other microphone rather than using my audio box. And that probably sounds awful because of the room that I'm in. So let's switch back. It tends to, it, it works pretty well, works pretty much in real time. And you can also boost the input and output volume on a per process basis here as well. And honestly, that's about all there is to this. It's a very useful piece of software once you know that it exists for dealing with the annoying complexities of Linux audio, being able to very quickly and efficiently select what audio device you want a particular input or output to come from or go to is incredibly useful because even with an audio switcher, no matter how hard you try, things are always gonna bind to the wrong damn audio device. I don't know why, it just always does. And so having pulse audio volume control on your system will allow you to easily fix that as well as allow you to turn off devices you don't need, which is going to both simplify your menus and also increase the probability that Pulse Audio will select the correct device to use as the default upon boot. So that's what I have to say about Pulse Audio volume control and just dealing with audio devices on Linux in general. It's a bit of a pain in the butt, but it can be made to work. So, you know, it's not game breaking or anything like that. I hope that this was helpful to you and that you found this video interesting, and I will see you in the next one.